Okay, so now that the meeting is now being recorded, hello and good afternoon again everybody. So this afternoon, we will just be discussing about base plate. So ulitin ka lang, for today's meeting, I will be showing you how we can design base plates. So in this slide right here, confirmation, may nakikita ba kayo? Na figure? Yes po. Okay, so what you are seeing in this slide is what you would be calling a base plate. So by the definition of a base plate, a base plate is to be the critical interface between the steel compression member and the concrete pedestal. So what you are seeing in this part is to be your steel compression member and this is to be your concrete pedestal. So ang i-design natin in this, um, in this meeting, I should say, is to be this portion right here which is to be our base plate. So, ito highlight natin ng red, no? So, this is to be our base plate. So, ito, then, ayan, actually, lahat yan. So, ulitin ko lang, by definition, a base plate is to be the critical interface between your steel compression member and your concrete pedestal. And the use, I mean, the um, primary use of your base plate is to provide a, a smooth transition of the load from your steel compression member towards the concrete pedestal by distributing your point load into a compression uh, pressure. So, ito siya, no? Kung ito man yung load PU natin, or let's say load PU, or let's say load PA, whichever the case may be. So, this is to be in LRFD or our load resistance factor. Lord load resistance factor design i should say and this is to be for your asd or your allowable stress design okay and if you would be having this particular pu right here or this point load it would be distributed in the means of a pressure so magiging pressure load siya dito sa baba teka so this is to be yung pressure natin so yan that is what a base plate basically is. So ngayon, next slide tayo. This is to be the anatomy of your base plate or let's say your um, steel, steel compression member, base plate, and pedestal connection. So ulitin ko lang, itong nasa baba is yung concrete pedestal natin. Itong nasa gitna is to be yung base plate natin. And itong nasa ibabaw, yung ating steel compression member. So ayun, but before I proceed... Okay lang guys, Na nakakaintindi pa? Okay, so, yes sir. Very good. Okay, ulitin ko lang, ito yung ating anatomy ng base plate, steel column, and concrete pedestal connection. So this one right here is to be your pedestal. Ito, ito yung pedestal natin. Then ito yung ating base plate, yung blue line natin, and ito yung ating steel compression member. So this is to be your steel column, ito yung compression member natin, your base plate, your concrete footing or your concrete pedestal, and we have here your shear lug, anchor rods, washers and threads, and grout. Pero explain natin kung ano yung mga yan, no? Pero, teka. Ay, Miss Dayag, pamute nga sandali ng ano, yung tawag dito, yung mic natin para smooth yung ating recording. So, ayun. So, yan. Thank you. And... Asa na tayo? So, ito pala, no? Ito nga yung column natin, then ito yung base plate. So, yung base plate natin is ipapatong siya natin. I mean, ipapatong natin siya sa ating grout. And this grout right here is to be our structural grout. So, structural grout. And this is to be a non-shrink one. So, non-shrink grout. But confirmation first, everyone, may sinusulat ba ako? I mean, may nakakita ba kayong sinusulat ko? Yes, sir. Okay, so yan yung tinatawag nating non-shrink grout. And the use of a non-shrink grout is, once again, for the smooth transition from the base plate to the concrete pedestal. Kasi nga, di ba, yung sa base plate natin is yung smooth transition natin from the steel column papunta sa ating concrete. Pero bago pa siya makarating sa concrete, kailangan muna natin ng non-shrink grout. So, this one right here, so ito, itong sinishadan ko ng green is what you would be calling your non-shrink grout. And by the name itself, dapat hindi siya mag-shrink kasi pag mag-shrink siya, sira ang ating column. I mean, ang ating, yes, ang ating column, ang ating base plate, or ang ating concrete pedestal. So, depende na kung ano masisira. So, ito, structural um, 
grout ito or ang ating tinatawag na non-shrink grout. Okay, so those are to be it. And also, we have these anchor rods right here. So the use of your anchor rod is to fix this steel column right here into um, place. And ang gamit naman ng washers and threads natin is, ayun din, same siya sa anchor rod, pero dapat set kasi yan. So para ma-fix nga natin, pagkalagay natin ng anchor rod, syempre, if fix din natin yung anchor rod with the washers and the threads. And ang gamit niyan is, I mean, another use of it is to provide additional shear resistance onto your structure. Since we are to design this uh, concrete pedestal, either a pin connection, so pin connection yan, or fixed. So kapag fixed connection yan, meron tayong um, FX, FY, FZ, and yung moment restraint natin. So fixed, may moment siya. Kapag pinned, ang nare-resist nare lang niya dyan is to be yung FX natin, FY natin, and FZ natin. So this is to be in a three-dimensional um, perspective. So FX, FY, and FZ. Teka, ang gulo na. Erase ko lang. So, ayun. And this shear lag right here is to provide another additional shear resistance. So, tutulong lang siya dun sa anchor rod natin. So, yun yung gamit ng shear lag natin. Okay. And this one on your right is to be the top view of our setup. So, itong square dito is yung ating um, base plate. So, this square right here is to be our base plate. And this eye section right here is to be our um, structural member or yung ating compression member. So this green letter I right here. So this is to be an I-shaped section or a wide flange. Pero hindi siya wide flange kasi as you can see, yan, hindi, naman ma hindi naman wide yung ating flange. So yun lang yun, self-explanatory. And sa pagdi-design natin ng concrete pedestal, I mean, hindi pala, ng base plate. So base plate design. So base plate. What we are solving for here are the values for our B or yung base ng ating base plate, yung ating depth. Pero yung depth natin dito, itawagin na lang natin siyang letter N para di din na nakakalito. Then, yung thickness. So in this case right here guys, what we are designing is to be this particular dimension right here. So ito, teka ibay natin color yung red na lang para mas kita. So, i-design natin ito kung gano'n yan kalawak. Ito din side na to kung gano'n din yan kalawak. And kung gano'n kakapal yung ating base plate. So, are you guys following? Yes, sir. Okay, so yun lang yung ating i-design. Okay, so moving forward. Oh, by the way guys, since I have said here that we will be changing the name of the depth into letter N. So, with that being said guys, palitan natin to ng letter N. Para di din tayo malito. So, ito. Ito yung N natin. Okay, so let's move forward. So if we are to design your base plates, we must know this couple of things. Actually, hindi lang couple. Um, lima atang steps ito. Pero yun, alalahanin ko na lang. So the first step that we will be taking into consideration or the first step in designing your base plate is to list the parameters and the properties involved. So list properties and parameters. So, ayun, kung ano man yung importante, no? Siyempre, ilista natin sila. And this include the following but are not limited to. So, we have here your yield stress. So, eto, alam nyo na to, FY, this is to be the yield stress of your member. Then, we also have your uh, FC prime. Since we are also dealing with a concrete pedestal here, so, FC prime is to be the compressive strength of your concrete. So, compressive strength, di ko na so So, FY, FC. And as for the properties of your section, what you will be needing here are the following. So, ano ba? So, ang kailangan dito is yung base ng flange, yung depth ng flange. So, eto, D. So, kaya natin pinalitan to ng letter N, no? Para hindi ma... Para hindi nakakalito. Kasi yung depth natin ng flange is to be this one right here. So, ito yung depth. And ito yung base ng flange. So, I think yun lang naman yung kailangan natin for the parameters and properties. So, ayan. Erase ko na muna to. So, that is for number one. 
Then for number 2, we would be solving for the factored load. So solve for factored loads. So if you are designing your base plate in LRFD or the load resistance factor design, this is to be the following load combination. So nandun siya sa NSCP na or yung National Structural Code of the Philippines natin. And since you're already graduating students, sa tingin ko naman meron na kayong copies ng ating NSCP. Pero kapag ang given lang dito is let's say ang live load and ang dead load lang. So for example, you are not taking um, earthquake loads into consideration, wind loads and other lateral loads. Kapag once again, dead load and live load lang, these are to be the following um, load combination. So th those are to be 1.4 dead load or 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. So whichever is greater in these two combination right here would govern. And in most cases, guys, this is the one governing. So ito yung sa LRFD. And if you are to design your concrete pedestal, I mean concrete pedestal na naman tayo eh, ang base plate pala. So if you are to design your base plate in allowable stress design or ASD, this is to be your service load. So when you say service load or service loads, these are the loads, I mean load combinations that are not factored. So ito, dead load plus live loads lang. So ito guys, yung nasa LRF, LRFD natin are your factored loads and yung ASD natin is to be your service loads or unfactored loads. So nakakasunod pa guys? Sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Okay lang. Yes, sir. Why pa? Yes, sir. Okay, so ayun, nasa step 2 na tayo. So ano bang isusunod natin dito? Hmm, sige. Hindi mag, mag diretso na tayo. So diretso na tayo sa bearing area. So for number 3, we would be computing for the required bearing area. So compute for required bearing area Okay so ito meron tayong panibagong mga um, formula dito and other formulas here are not so new to you since you have already tackled your uh, reinforced concrete design if na take nyo na and kapag dinyo pa nito take makikita nyo itong formula na to so your P, your PN or your nominal strength is to be equal to 0 0.85 FC prime times A. So area 1. So ito yung ating bearing, I mean bearing stress ng ating concrete pedestal. And this A1 right here is to be, so A1 is to be equal to the area of the base plate. So, and ito yung equation number 1 natin. Pero magagamit lang natin tong equation number 1 if the dimensions of your base plate is to be equal with the dimension of your um, concrete pedestal. So, if we would be going back to this slide right here. So, ito nakikita natin, no? Yung base plate natin, magkaiba siya ng size kesa sa um, concrete pedestal natin. So, hindi pwede itong formula na to. So what do I mean here pala guys? So let's say that this is to be our compression member. So ito yung column natin. Then we will be having a base plate here of course. So kung yan yung base plate natin, then yung concrete pedestal natin is to be this one right here. Kapag same sila, kapag same sila ng dimension, so for example that those are to be 350mm by 350mm, you can use this particular equation right here. Or Pn is equal to 0 0.85 Fc prime A1. So, ayun. But if not, guys, so if I would be deleting this, kapag hindi, kunwari magkaiba, no? just like in this example right here, if this is to be your concrete pedestal, mas malaki siya kaysa sa ating base plate, Kapag ganyan guys, ang gagamitin nating equation is to be this one right here. So number 2, our PN. Teka, ibigay natin yung color para naman mas maayos. So let's say yellow. So number 2, 
your PN is now to be equal to so 0 0.85 FC prime A1 but this time we would be introducing this particular fraction right here. So the square root of area 2 divided by area 1 whereas your area 2 is to be the area Teka, sulat ko na lang dito para maayos. So your area 2 is to be the area of the supporting concrete. So area of supporting concrete. So ayan, etong equation number 1 magagamit mo lang siya kapag parehas yung dimensions ng base plate nyo sa concrete pedestal. And otherwise, kapag magkaiba, ito yung gagamitin nyo. So, klaro guys. So, pwede nyo palang screenshot to guys, if ever. Kung ayaw nyo yung notes kung ayaw nyo yung isulat, pwede nyo yung screenshot to. So, ito yung importante dito sa pag-design natin ng base plate. Okay, so guys, proceed na. Okay na? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Proceed na tayo. If, um, so, if that is for step number three, mamaya pa yan. So, for your next step. So, step number four is to, I mean, the fourth step is to check the limits. Teka, red pala natin to. So, number four, check the limits. So, ano ba yung mga limits natin dito? So, for example that you have solved your um, area in this one right here. So, ito. Kunwari, ito yung ginamit mo, no? Na equation kasi magkaiba nga yung A2 mo pati yung A1 mo. Ang mangyayari dito is that you would be comparing this to the equation of 1.7 FC prime area 1. So, direct substitution I compare mo lang siya if it is to be less than or equal to. And if it is to be less than or equal to, ibig sabihin, yung nasolve mo ditong A1, ito yung gagamitin mo. Kasi by the way pala guys, dito, di ba nag-solve ka ng factored loads? And dito sa PN, given na to, given the factored loads, so ito PN given yan, etong A2 given din to, and etong A1, ito actually yung sinosolve mo yung A1. And once that you have solved for that, check mo siya ngayon if it is to be less than or equal to 1.7 FC prime A1. So if it is, then ulitin ko lang, mag-govern yung nasolve mong A1. And if not, you would be using this equation right here. So i-resolve mo siya, then, ayun, itong A1 na to ngayon yung mag-govern na bago. Pero, rare occasions to, no, minsan lang nangyayari to, pero nangyayari pa rin. So, ayun. So, that is to be the first limit. And another limit that you must check is that, of course, your area, or let's say your area 1 right here. So, your area 1 should be less than or equal to um, BF or the base of the flange times the depth. So, ano bang implication nito? So, if you would be going back here in this particular I mean, figure on your right side. So, teka, tanong ko muna. Ano yung nakikita nyo sa screens nyo ngayon? So, your figures. Okay, so ano ba? May nababasa ba kayong weak axis sa right? Yes, sir. Okay, so yun. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, yun. Gusto ko lang malaman kung parehas tayo na nakikita. Anyway, guys, etong Limitation na to. Teka, copy-paste ko na nga lang to para mas madali nyo maintindihan. Teka guys ha. So, eto. So, etong limitation na to, which is A1 is to be less than or equal to BF times D. Dapat daw, yung base plate natin, syempre, mas malaki siya kesa sa dun sa binubuhat niya. So, if this is to be your concrete, I mean concrete ulit, yung ating steel compression member, so eto yung wide flange natin, of course, dapat yung base plate natin, it is either um, exactly this one right here. So, ito yung minimum size niya. Then, of course, dapat mas malaki siya. So, ito yung minimum or mas malaki. 
Kasi if your A1, if your A1 is to be... Teka, baliktad pala. Mali pala to guys. Baliktad to. So it is, I mean, it should be greater than or equal to BF times D. Because, because if your A1 is to be less than or equal to, I mean, less than BF times D, maaring yung masolve mong base plate is to be smaller than that of your compression member. And self-explanatory naman na kung bakit bawal, no? Siyempre, ano pang silbi ng base plate mo, edi hindi niya na support yung inyong column. So, yun lang naman yun, guys. So, you would be checking with these two parameters right here. So, okay lang, guys. Nakasunod pa. Yes, sir. Okay, so, ayan. I-check nyo lang itong dalawang yan. Then, kapag pasado na, you would be proceeding to step number five. So, for your step number five, teka, meron pa step number five dito, eh. Um... Teka, isipin ko lang guys. Nakalimutan ko din eh. Okay, so yung step number 5 natin is i-check mo na siya ngayon. So kunin mo yung ating PN. Solve mo yung PN. So i-check nyo. Given. Hindi, hindi. Mali, mali. So yung step number 5 pala natin is that we will be getting the dimensions already. So solve. Determine. Sorry, nakalimutan ko. So determine the dimensions. So, yung dimensions na sinasabi natin dito are the following. So, ito yung B, ito yung N, and ito yung T. Teka, copy-paste ko lang sa ating next slide para mas maayos. So, ito pala yung step number 5 natin. No? So, solve natin yung B, N, and yung ating T. So, unahin natin sa N. No? So, for our N, this is to be given by the equation square root of area number 1 plus Delta. So, yung area number 1, alam na natin yan, yun yung nasolve natin kanina. And your delta is to be given by this equation. So, 0 0.5 times 95% of uh, D minus 0 0.8 or 80% of the base of the flange. So, ito. Itong dalawang dimensions na to or itong dalawang parameters na to is yung parameter ng ating concrete eh, concrete ako ng concrete ng ating steel compression member. So direct substitution no guys. So if you have already solved for this, substitute nyo dito then solve for your variable n. So ito na solve nyo na yan. So after solving for n, the next thing that you will be doing is that you will be solving for um, letter B or the base of the base plate. So, ito yung una, then yung pangalawa, B. And this is to be given by the equation of your solved area 1 divided by N. So, nasolve mo na yung N kanina, then ayan, ito na yung ating formula. So, B and yung ating N. Okay pa guys? Buhay pa? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. So, direct substitution lang tayo dito sa part na to. Okay. So, ano na bang next? Ngayon, pag nasolve nyo na yan, guys, kasi there are some cases, and since you are to be structural engineers in the near future, it would be upon your judgment if you would be rounding it up or kung gusto nyo yung esakto. But, let's say that you will be... Um, bakit ayaw magsulat? Teka lang. Ayun, pwede na. Okay, so for example that you have solved this, so for example that your N is to be equal to 502.6 and let's say your letter B is to be, um, ano ba maganda? Kunwari, 627.2. So ano bang gagawin mo dito? So yan na ba yung sagot mo? If you are a good engineer, which you will be in the near future, i-round up mo siya to the nearest to the nearest, yan, kung to the nearest na gusto mo. And yung gusto mo dapat is yung madali namang i-measure ng ating mga construction workers. And kasi pag sinabi mo sa kanila, no, mag-cut ka nga ng 502.6 na base plate, wala naman silang ano, um, micrometer caliper, wala naman silang vernier caliper. So mas maganda kapag yung nasusukat siya sa metro. So if, in my case guys, I would be rounding this up to 505. So, ulitin ko lang that is in my case because I, I know 
sa capacity na kunwari ng mga workers ko, alam kong kaya nilang magputol ng 505 mm na dimension. Pero for example, ang nabili nyo lang na metro nyo, I mean metro ng mga tao nyo is to be in terms of 10 mm, edi eh mas magandang i-round up mo to to 510. So 510. So this is to be by the judge by the judgment of the structural engineer. Basta ito yung minimum na na-solve mo, pwede ka tumaas, huwag ka lang bababa. So gano'n na din dito sa ating B, no? So for our base, in my case guys, I would just be rounding this up to 630. But once again, this is according to the judgment of the structural engineer that is to be designing the base plate. So malino ba guys? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so proceed na tayo. Ay, hindi pa pala. Hindi pa pala tapos. Okay, so after getting the dimensions of B and N, the next thing that you will be doing is that you will be resolving for this one. Kasi nga, di ba nag-round up ka? Teka, ang gulo. Di ba nga nag-round up ka dito? So yung B mo, tumaas. Then yung N mo, tumaas din. So what you will be doing is that you will be resolving for this. So, i-check mo yung bagong PN niya. Kasi nga, yung area 1 mo, nagbago na. Medyo tumaas yan. So, solve for PN. So, this is for step number 6. So, solve. Resolve. For PN. Or PU or PA. Whichever the case may be. So, kung nasa LRF, LRFD ka, Dissolve mo yung PU. Kung nasa ESD ka, solve mo yung PA. Then yun, check adequacy. So basically guys, adequacy checking to. So eto adequacy checking to number 6. So kapag okay na yung number 6 mo, yung step 6 mo, yung number 7 naman is for you to determine the missing dimension here. So eto meron pa tayong T, no? So, kanina kasi hindi natin na-solve yung thickness. So, solve for thickness. Okay, so your T, T required. So, your thickness required is to be equal to, so L times the square root of 2 PU divided by a uh, phi. F, Y, B times N. So, ito kapag LRFD. So, this is for LRFD. Kasi gumamit nga tayo ng reduction factor dito, which is yung phi. And kapag ASD naman, your T required, or yung required thickness natin is to be L times the square root of 2 omega times PA divided by Fy times B times bitin na pala sa mga screens nyo. Teka, iusog ko lang. Oops, sorry. For a while. Copyin ko lang sa next slide para makita nyo. Nabitin pala sa mga monitors nyo. So, eto yung ating number 7. So, Ito yung equations natin. Ulitin ko lang ito. Kapag ASD yung ginagamit natin, this is to be 2 times omega times PA divided by Fy times PN. So, this is for ASD. So, ayun. Ito, T required kasi ito. Dapat yan yung minimum. So, you can go greater than that, just not below that. Okay, so ano ba tong value ng L natin, no? So for the value of L, teka, erase ko lang para mas maayos. So for the value of your L, so eto siya. Your L is to be the largest between um, M, N, and Lambda N. Pero ano ba tong M, N, and lambda, lambda N natin? So, balik tayo dito sa figure na to. Ito kasi yung ating M, N, and Delta N. 
So, eto guys, yung M natin. Eto. Eto din yung N natin. So, kung anong mas malaki dyan, so kung mas malaki itong M na to, mas mag-govern siya. Pag mas malaki itong N na to, mas mag-govern siya. But aside from those two, meron pa tayong lambda N dito. Teka, akit ko lang to. So, for your lambda N naman, lambda N, this is to be given by the equation of the square root of D times BF divided by 4. Ay, 4F. 4 lang pala. So, ito. Kapangit naman ang sulat ni Sir. Teka, ulitin natin. Para naman di nakakahaya. So, the square root of D. Pangit pa rin. So, yun. Pagbigyan nyo na. So, DBF divided by 4. So, ayan. Mamimili kayo dyan sa tatlo. And kung ano yung mas malaki, yun yung isubstitute mo dito. Then, solve mo na yung thickness required. So, those are to be the steps that we will be making use. Okay, so let's just have an example right here. So in this example, guys, a W section is used as a column and is supported by a concrete pedestal as shown. So this is to be our concrete pedestal right here and this is to be our W section. And our W section here is to be W10 by 49. So para malaman yung section properties, just go to the EASC Ships database, then Control F, hanapin yun na. Okay, so the column will support a service load of 450 kilonewtons and a service live load of 650 kilonewtons. The concrete strength is to be 20, um, 21 megapascals and we will be determining the dimensions of the base plate using LRFD method and NSC, NSCP AISC specifications. And we will be using A36 for the base plate. Okay, so ano ba yung mga kailangan nating malaman? By the way guys, I have predetermined these values right here already. So alam nyo naman na kung saan nakuha itong mga to dun sa AISC Shapes Database. So guys, confirmation. Marunong naman na kayong gumamit nun, no? AISC Shapes Database. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Sige, ayan. So eto nakuha ko yun sa AIS AISC Shapes Database. Okay, so what Additional parameters do we need? So it is said here that the concrete strength is to be 21 megapascal. So with that guys, our FC prime is to be 21 megapascal. And it is also indicated here that we will be using A36 steel. So meaning that the strength of our steel is to be 36 kips per square inch. So alam yun na kung anong ginagawa natin sa mga KSI, no? We are to be, I mean, we are converting them into um, megapascal or in metric units. So times 6.895 since this is to be our conversion factor. So from that, guys, our FY is now to be equal to calculator. Or let, dapat 248 to eh. So 36 times 6.895. This is now to be equal to 248. And for our lessons, for our quizzes, and for our plates, mag-ground tayo to the nearest whole number. So in this case, guys, this is to be 248 megapascal. So ulitin ko lang na guys, sa mga plates nyo, and sa mga exams nyo, i-round nyo to the nearest whole number. So hindi ko sinabing round up, basta round to the nearest whole number. And in this case, we rounded down. Kasi nga, 0.22. Okay, and the next step, Ito pala yung sinusundan natin yung steps, guys, no? So, itong mga steps na to. So, for the second step is for us to determine the factored loads. And since we are designing it using LRFD method, we are using factored loads here. So, it is either that our PU, taka, ibigin ko lang yung color ulit. So, it is either that our PU is to be equal to 1.4 dead load or let's say PU is to be equal to 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So, whichever is higher in these two. So, if we are to be solving them, so, hindi ko na substitute sa ano? De, joke lang, sige, substitute ko na lang para makita nyo. So, 1.4 times dead load and our dead load here is to be 450 kilonewtons as indicated here. So, times 450 kilonewtons and this is now to be equal to um, 
1.4 times 450. So this is now to be equal to 630 kilonewtons. So 630 kilonewtons. So ito yung first possibility natin. And as for this one right here, this is to be 1.2 times dead load. And our dead load is to be equal to 450 kilonewtons once again. And we will be adding, so 1.6 times the live load. And our live load here, as per indicated in the problem, is to be equal to 650 kilonewtons. So 650 kilonewtons. So solving for such, 1.2 times 450 plus 1.6 times 650. And that is to be 1580 kilonewtons. So 1580 kilonewtons and as you can see guys that this value right here is to be higher than that of this meaning this one governs so wala namang dispute dyan no okay naman tayong lahat doon no guys kung ano kung alin yung nag govern yes sir yes sir okay, so yes sir very good okay so ano na yung step 3 natin nakalimutan ko no so for our step 3 so, we will be computing for the required bearing area already. So, step number three. Sobran. So, dito pala. So, ito yung step number three natin. Ay, sorry. Bearing area. Wait lang guys ah. Nag-error yung pen ko eh. So solve for bearing area. So pagpasensyahan nyo na yung sulat ko. Nag-error yung pen ko. Pati yung kamay ko. Okay. So we would be using this formula. So we would be using um P N is to be equal to 0 0.85 FC prime. Teka, ibahin natin ulit yung color para mas maayos. So, ulitin ko lang. PN is to be equal to 0 0.85 FC prime times A1 times the square root of area 2 divided by area 1. And as you know already that your area 2 is to be the area of your concrete pedestal. So, in your concrete pedestal, it is to be given by the dimension of 450 by 450. So, direct substitution. Pero, once again, guys, this is to be PN. Pero, ang nasolve natin dito is to be PU. So, ano bang gagawin natin dyan? So, kung natatandaan natin, guys, ang PU natin is to be equal to PPN. So what we would be doing here is that we will be substituting this equation right here to this particular general equation. So with such guys, PU is now to be equal to so phi times PN. Pero ang PN natin is to be this one. So phi times 0 0.85 times FC prime times area 1 times the square root of area 2 divided by area 1. Okay, and ito pala guys, sa ano, sa bearing, kung natatandaan nyo man before, wala ko dito ng um, note. So, ito yung ating phi and ito yung ating omega. So, sa yielding, sa yield limit states, ang phi natin is to be equal to 0 0.9. Then, ang ating omega is to be 1.67. Do you guys agree? Sa phi and omega natin? Sir. Okay, so tama yan. So, 0 0.9 and 1.67. And sa rupture, etong phi natin is to be equal to 0 0.75 and yung omega natin, 2. So, na-memorize nyo na din siguro yan dun sa ating TRS or ang tensile rupture strength. Then, we will be adding another one here. So, sa bearing, may bago na naman tayo. So, for bearing... Your phi is now to be equal to 0 0.65 and your omega is to be equal to, teka nakalimutan ko. Pero kung nakalimutan nyo guys, meron tayong technique. 
if you would be multiplying both of this, so ito 0.9 and 1.67, ang answer dapat niya is 1.5. So to confirm guys, so 0.9 times 1.67, that is to be 1.503. Pero itong 1.67 kasi na to, na round up lang yan. Sa totoo lang, 1.66666 yan. So if you would be solving for that, 1.5 siya actually. So, ganun na din sa rupture, no? So, if you would be multiply the phi and the omega, so 0.75 times 2, that is to be 1.5. So, kapag multiply mo itong dalawa, 1.5 palagi yan. So, if the product here is to be 1.5, so para malaman natin kung ano yung value dito, we will be dividing 1.5 by 0 0.65. So, 1.5 divided by 0.65, so meaning ang sagot natin dito is to be 2.31. Teka, delete ko lang to. So, this is 2.31. So, kapag memoryado nyo yan, eh, di, di nyo na kailangan mag-solve. Ako kasi, nakalimutan ko. So, re-resolve ko na lang. So, are you guys clear? I mean, are, am I making myself clear, I should say? Yes, sir. Okay, so, yun. Yun ang tatandaan nyo, guys. Kapag multiply nyo yung phi and yung omega, they should be equal to 1.5. So, ayan. So, with this one right here taken into consideration, so yung bearing nga lang naman yung ang concern natin dito. So, for bearing, 0 0.65, meaning that this phi right here is to be 0 0.65. So, direct substitution, ang ating PU is to be 1580 kilonewtons. So, 1580 kilonewtons. Pero convert natin into newtons, so times 10 raised to 3. Maging newtons na yan. So wala naman siguro kayong dispute dito. Alam nyo na, ito yung conversion factor. And for our value for phi, hindi yung value ng phi, kaya in-raise ko pa. 0 0.65 pala. So 0 0.65, type okay, color coding natin para mas maayos. So 0 0.65 times 0 0.85 times FC prime, and then FC prime natin is to be 21. So, 21 times area 1. So, ang area 1 natin is to be unknown. And, tawag dito, and yung area 1 ulit natin unknown. So, ito, area 1 din ito. Then, for our area 2, it is to be 450 by 450. Ito yung area ng concrete pedestal. So, 450 squared. So, ayun. So, it would be up to you on how you would be solving for this. But in my case, mas gusto ko na lang mag-shift solve. So, for your quizzes and your plates, kahit i-shift solve nyo na itong mga to, okay lang. So, from that guys, so your area 1 is now to be equal to So, 1580 times 1000 alpha equal sign point Oops, na excite. So, 0. 0.65 times 0. 0.85 times 21 times alpha x times the square root of 450 squared divided by alpha x. So, shift solve para isolve nyo na yung x. Pero ito pala yung technique guys. Para mas map mapabilis ng, I mean, para mas mapabilis yung solve ng calculators nyo ng kung ano man yung shift solve nyo, kapag tinanong niya dito, solve for x, mag-input ka dito ng isang number na sa tingin mo medyo malapit doon yung sagot. So, I think guys, so I think lang naman, yung sagot natin is to be near 100,000 or let's say 110,000. So, I would be putting 110,000 here. So, ito optional lang to guys, pero gagawin ko to para mas mapabilis yung computation natin kasi pag nag-shift solve kayo ng merong square root and merong nasa labas ng square root, medyo matagal siya. So, equal sign. Ay, medyo napabilis pala. So, from that guys, our answer here is to be equal to 91576.91 mm squared. So, ayun lang yun. So, ano guys, malinaw? Okay pa? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Tignan nyo lang muna itong pag-solve ko. Process nyo muna. May gagawin lang ako sandali. So, for a while.
Okay, sige. Are there any questions before we proceed? Answer. Okay, very good. Okay, so ito nga yung ating area 1. So ito na yung required natin na bearing area ng ating base plate. So the next thing that we will be doing is that I forgot. So balik na lang ako dito. No? So sa step number 4, we would be checking the limits. So check natin ngayon ito. Kung less than or equal siya dito sa 1.7 FC prime A1, then i-check natin yung area 1 kung mas malaki siya sa BFD. So, ayun. Next slide na ulit tayo, pero teka, copyin ko lang to. So, ito. So, check limits. So, step number four. Check limits. So, yung unang limit nga natin, by the way guys, since ito pala direct substitution yung ginawa natin and ito yung A1 yung sinurve natin, kapag substitute natin tong area 1 dito, automatic ang sagot niya is to be ito. So, ang... Teka, balik na naman tayo para mas maintindihan nyo. Papihin ko lang ulit ito. So, ito nga pala yung ating limit na guys. So, this is to be our limit. And if we would be, I mean, substituting this value right here to this equation right here, we would be arriving at an answer of 1580 times 10 raised to negative. I mean, times 10 raised to 3. So, 1580 times 10 raised to 3 newtons. Ngayon, i-compare natin siya dito sa 1.7 FC prime area 1. So, with that guys, so 1.7 times FC prime, and ang FC prime natin dito is to be 21 megapascal as indicated in the problem. Then we would be multiplying it by area 1, and our area 1 is to be this one solved right here. So times 91576.91 millimeter squared. Okay, so solving for this, so 1580 times 10 raised to 3 times N, I mean, Newtons, I should say. Then solve natin yung nasa right. So 1.7 times 21 times 91576.9. So ang answer natin dito is to be 3269295.33. Ay teka guys, may nakalimutan ako dito. Since we are designing it in LRFD, may fee pa dapat dito. So, meron pa tayong fee dito sa part na to. And, ayun guys. Yun, hindi ilagyan ulit natin ng fee dito. So, multiply natin ng 0.65. So, yun pala yung fee ng bearing, no? So, 0.65 times that. Ang dapat pala talagang sagot dito is to be 2125041.8. Newtons. And as you can see guys that this value right here is to be, I mean, I mean is indeed less than this value right here, it means na okay itong nasolve natin. So, kapag okay na siya, we will be proceeding with the fifth step. So, step number five. So, check the dimension. So, solve for the dimensions. Copy ko lang to para mas maintindihan nyo. So, ito yung mga equations na gagamitin natin. So, this one right here at the upper right corner of your screen. So, yung sinasolve pala natin guys is to be, teka, copyin ko na naman para makita nyo. So, ito sa lower part. So, ang sinasolve natin dyan is ito. Ito yung N natin ulit. Teka. Ito yung N and yung B. So, sinosolve natin yung B and yung N. And para malaman natin yung value ng N, we would be using this particular equation right here. 
So your n is to be equal to square root of a1 plus delta, and your delta is to be given by this equation right here. So for your delta, this is to be one half of, I mean, 50% of 0.95 times d. Ano na yung d natin? Yung d natin is to be 253.49. So itong dalawang to, given to guys. Kopyain ko na lang ulit para di ulit natin makalimutan. So given itong d pati bf. So kopyain ko lang muna dito para makita ko lang. So 0.95 times 253.49 minus 0 0.8 times 254. So, direct substitu substitution, guys. I should say. Sorry. So, ayun. So, from that, guys, our delta is to be equal to so, 0.5 times 0.95 times 253.49 minus 0.8 times 254. So, with that, guys, our answer here is to be equal to 18.5 80.80775 Okay, so Asa yung pen ko? Round up ko na lang sa second decimal guys Wala naman ng silbi gaano yung nasa third decimal Kasi millimeters naman yan So, 18.81 mm So, ito na yung delta natin So, we will be substituting it to this equation right here For us to get the value of n so, for the value of n, this is to be given by the equation of square root of area 1. And yung area 1 na nasolve natin is to be 91576. Teka, ilagay ko nga lang sa calculator ko para hindi ko makalimutan. So, 91576.91. So, 91576.91. Okay, so 91576.91. Plus delta. So, plus delta, and our delta is to be equal to 18.81. So, from that, guys, the value for our n is now to be equal to, so, the square root of 91576.91. Oops, bakit naman ganun? Teka lang, teka lang, guys, ha. Ulitin ko na equation natin. So, square root of 91576.91. Plus 18.81. So our answer here is to be equal to 321.427. So 321.427. So this is to be the required dimension of this particular dimension right here. So this is to be in terms of millimeters. But like what I have said earlier, na it is to be by the judgment of the structural engineer if he would be rounding it up or if he would be uh, making use of the exact number. So, in this case, guys, round up na lang tayo. And I want to round this up to 325 mm. Para mas madali namang masukat ng ating mga foreman and ng ating mga welder. So, 325 mm na lang yung gamitin natin. Okay, so, are you guys still following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, i-delete ko na to, no, guys. So, ayun. Screenshot nyo na lang muna if ayaw nyong mawala to. Pero sige, screenshot nyo muna kasi de-delete ko para lang maiurong ko ang ating value ng N dito para ma-solve natin yung value ng B. Okay, so I'm assuming na na-screenshot nyo na. So, pa-SSD na lang po, mga lods. So, eto, no, itas ko lang to. So, eto yung 3 to 5 mm, yung N natin. So, we would be solving for B. So, our B here is to be equal to area 1 divided by N. And our area 1 is to be given by the number that we have solved earlier. And that is to be 91576.91 millimeter squared. So, we would be dividing this by our newfound N or 325 mm. So B, so looking at the calculator to your left, 
that is to be given by the equation of 91576.91 divided by 325. So from that, guys, our answer here is to be equal to 281.77. And i-round up ko na ulit to sa 285 para mas madaling sukatin. So with that, guys, these are to be our values for B and N. So 325 and 285. So kung quiz man to, more than two-thirds na yung score natin. So ayan. Okay, anyway, the next thing that we will be doing here is that we will be checking for adequacy. So check natin kung yung pinagsosolve natin kanina or yung nakuha nating dimensions dito is to be adequate. So from that guys, we will be using this particular equation right here. So copy-paste ko na lang ulit. So ito yung gagamitin natin equation. So ulitin lang naman natin eh, parang trial and adjustment dito. And kalimutan ko na lang, ang B and N natin, 3, 2, 5, 2, 85. Teka, sulat ko lang. So ang B natin, 3, 2, 5. And ang, I mean, ang N natin, 3, 2, 5. And ang B natin, 2, 8, 5. So, 3, 2, 5, 2, 8, 5 respectively. Tama ba? Okay, so, ang isolve na lang natin dito, guys, is yung right side ng equation. Then, we will be comparing it with our factored load here. So, dapat mas malaki ang ating strength kesa, of course, sa binubuhat niya. So, from that, guys, substituting known values, that would, I mean, we would be arriving at an equation of, so, 15, 80 times 10 raised to 3 newtons. So, i-check natin siya ngayon kung mas malaki ba siya, mas maliit, or anything in between. So, question mark muna yan. Then, this is to be 0 0.65 times 0 0.85 times 21 times area 1. And our area 1 is to be equal to, so, 3, 2, 5 times 2, 8, 5 times the square root of 450 squared divided by area 1 and our area 1 once again is to be equal to 325 times 285. Okay, so now solve natin ngayon yung, I mean yung side ng equation na yan. So 0 0.65 times 0 0.85 times 21 times 325 times 285 times the square root of 450 squared divided by 325. Oops, sorry. 325 times 285. I check ko lang. So, 0 0.65, 0 0.85, 21, 325, 285, 450 squared, 325, and 285. So, our answer here is to be 1589015. 0.748. Pero divide natin to sa 1,000 para makuha natin yung kilonewtons, no? So, ito. So, ito, ito yung ating sagot. So, 1580 kilonewtons. Then, nasa right side natin, that is to be 1589.016 kilonewtons. And, as you can see, that this one on your right is to be greater than that of this. So, meaning adequate yung ating base plate sa bearing. Okay pa guys? Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so kung adequate na siya guys, patapos na talaga tayo actually. So, ang next step natin is for us to get the value of the thickness. Kasi meron na tayong B, meron na din tayong N. So, kung dito man sa example natin dito, Meron na tayo ditong dimension. So, let's say that this is to be 300. Oops, sorry. Teka. So, itong dimension daw na to, 325 daw to. Kunwari. Then, itong nasa right, this is to be 285. Then, ang kulang na lang natin is yung thickness. So, solve na ngayon natin yung thickness. And, the formula for thickness would be as follows. So, ito. And since we are using LRFT, we would be making use of this first equation right here. So, teka lang. So, eto. Solve natin yung thickness ngayon. And yung lambda L natin is to be... Ay, lambda L. L lang pala. 
Pero ayun. So, ano ba yung mga given dito? So, we already know this value right here. So, we already know PU. We already know FY. We already know FI. We already know BN. And by the way, guys, itong FI pala na to, yield state na to. Kasi yung thickness natin, guys, ang failure niyan is yielding, hindi bearing. So, kapag yielding yung failure, meaning na ang fee natin, teka, balik natin yung fee. So, yung fee natin dito is to be 0.9. Kasi nga, yung failure natin ng thickness is to be yielding. Malino ba, guys? Yes, sir. So, yan. So, 0.9 yung ating fee dito. So, we already know these values right here. So, we already know this, 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 but not this. So, ngayon, solve natin yung L. And like what I have said earlier, that for your L, it can either be, so your M, your N, or your lambda N. So, ngayon, solve natin yung mga yan, no? Palabasin ulit natin to. So, okay. So, unahin natin yung M. So, ito yung M natin. Teka. So, this is to be for our M. So, yung M natin is to be. So, if this is to be our N, I mean our capital letter N. Teka. Tayo bumaba. Teka lang guys. Ah. Ayaw niya eh. Tayo masulatan itong picture na to. Ayaw talaga. Anyway, sige kung ayaw mo, edi huwag. Okay, so ito pala guys, no? So, ang sinasolve natin dito is to be your N and our M. So, yung M natin, if this is to be your M, then meron na tayong D. So, meron na tayong D. So, ano yan? Um... Paano ba yan? Gawa tayo equation. So, yung D or yung N natin, nasolve na actually natin to. So, ang N natin is to be 285. Tama. So, ito pala guys, 285 yung buo. So, 285 yung buong ito. Then, itong baba, this is to be 325. So, itong buong to, 325. And itong buong to, 285. So, nasolve na actually natin yan kanina. And if we are to represent this in a mathematical format, so our 325 is to be equal to twice the n, so dalawang n, tapos isang 0.8 bf. So, 2n plus 0.8 bf. Pero, noon naman na itong bf na to, so meaning, or n is to be equal to um, b, or yung 325. Teka nga, sige, i-b muna natin to. So, b is to be equal to, um, I mean, n is equal to b minus 0.8 times the base of the flange divided by um, 2. So, ayun lang naman yan. Tama ba? O, oh, tama yan. So, ayan, ayan yung equation natin. And for m, So, kung ito man yung M natin dito, M is to be equal to um, N or capital letter N minus 0.95D. So, minus 0.95D divided by 2. So, ito yung gagamitin natin equations natin for M and for N. So, turong ko lang dito. Teka, eh kung next na lang to, next slide na lang to. Teka. So, ito yung mga gagamitin natin equations for L. So, ito yung M. And ito yung N. And ilista ko lang dito. The value for our capital N is to be equal to 285. And yung B natin is to be 325. Yung BF natin And yung, ano na isa? Yung depth natin is to be as follows. So, nakalimutan ko na naman. So, ang BF natin, 254. And ang D natin, 253.49. Kalilipat ko lang, kalimutan ko ulit. Ano ulit yun? 
254 pala. So, ayun. So, 254. Then, 253.49 mm. Teka, isa pa. Para sigurado. Nakalimutan ko na naman eh. So, 254, 253.49. So, ayan. Tama na yan. So, direct substitu substitution guys. So, yung M natin, this is not to be equal to 285 minus 95% of D. And yung D natin, 253.49. And we will be dividing this by 2. So, with that guys, our value for M is to be equal to so, looking once again at the calculator to your light, right, I should say. So, 285 minus 0.95 times 253.49 divided by 2. So, our value for your M is to be 22.09225. So, 22.09. So, ito yung M natin. And for your N... So, hindi ko na isulat mismo yung substitution niya. Direct ako na sa calculator natin. That is to be. So, ano yung B natin? 325. So, 325 minus 80% of the base of the flange. And that is to be 325. Ay, mali. Ano pala? Uh, 254. Oh, tama. So, 254. And we would be, I mean, we would be dividing this by 2. So, our answer here is to be 60.9. Teka, confirmation. Tama ba itong pinagsusulat ko? So, 60.9325. Oh, tama yan. So, ito, millimeters. Ito din, millimeters. So, as you can see, guys, mas malaki itong N kesa sa M. So, meaning, nag-govern itong N na to kapag itong dalawa lang yung kinocompare natin. Pero, tandaan natin, guys, meron pa tayong lambda N. So, yung lambda n natin, which is this one right here, is to be given by the equation of the square root of d b f divided by 4. So, ito, direct substitution. Looking at the calculator on your left, this is now to be equal to, so 253. I mean, the square root of 253.49 times 254 divided by 4, our answer here is to be 63.44. So, ito na ngayon yung lambda n natin. And if we are to compare this one right here, so compare natin ito, ito, and ito, of course, mas malaki itong 63.4. So, with that, guys, yan yung governing L natin. So, lagay natin dito. So, L is now to be equal to 63. Point forty four. So, ito yung governing value natin. So, balik tayo dito. Ang gulo na. Okay, so, balik tayo dito, guys. So, yung L na natin ngayon. Uy, nangyari dun. Okay, anyway. So, yung L na natin ngayon is to be 63.44. Nangyari dito. point 44. So, ito FY. So, for that guys, so for your T required, this is now to be equal to L or 63.44 times the square root of 2 times PU and our PU once again is to be equal to 1580 kilonewtons. So, ito yung factor load natin kanina. 1580 times 10 raised to 3. Don't forget to convert it into newtons first kasi puro naka-millimeters tayo. So, that is to be, oops, nangyari dyan. So, ito pala. So, divided by um, 0.9 or our fee. Okay, may pulit yung color para mas makita nyo. So, ito yung fee natin which is 0 0.9 times Fy and our Fy is to be 248. So, ito yung 36 KSI natin kanina times B. Ano na yung B natin? So, 325 times N. And ang N natin is to be 285. So, ito yung mga nasolve natin kanina. With that, our answer now is to be equal to so, 63.44 times the square root of 
2 times 1580 times 1000 times 0 0.9 times 248 times 325 times 285. Tama ba itong pinagsusulat ko? So, 325, 285. Okay, so tama na yan. So, our answer here is to be equal to 24.8 mm. And in my case, I would just round this up to 25 mm. So, this is to be the governing thickness of our base plate. So, going back here. So, going back to this particular figure right here. So, sabi dito, if this is to be your W section. By the way, hindi W section itong column dito. Hello section to. Pero kunwari na lang W section yan. So, let's say that this is to be your W section. And this is to be your load PU, which is to be 1580 kN. And yung concrete pedestal natin is to be at a dimension of 400 by 400. So, ito yung 400 and ito yung 400. So, 400 mm by 400 mm. So, ang nasolve natin dito, etong dimension daw na to or yung BF natin is to be, teka, red na lang pala. So, ito nasolve natin dito. This is to be 325 mm. Na lang sa baba. And this particular dimension here on the right, that is to be 285 mm. So, ito yung dalawang nasolve natin kanina. And the thickness, ano na yung thickness natin? Ayun yung 24.8 pero 25 mm na. So, redound up ko na siya to 25 mm. So, yun na yung maging base plate natin. So, governing answer, base plate. This is to be equal to, so, base times N, I mean, base by N by T. Or that is now to be equal to 325 by 285 by 25 mm, respectively. So, ito na yung governing um, answer natin for our base plate. So, ayun lang. Kuha ba, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so are there any questions? Okay, so wala. Okay. Um before we end the discussion, meron bang newcomers para may habol ko pa sa attendance? Okay. Okay, so mga nandito si Mr. Camille, Miss Ago, Miss Dayag, Miss Antenor. Miss Ortigera, Ortiguero, um, Miss Tomas, Mr. Gipan, Mr. Dancel, and Miss Manuel. Okay, so final call. Are there any questions? Uh, Miss Dayag, ano medyo, medyo mahina tayo, Mike? Hello, Teka, lakasan ko nga yung volume ko. Naririnig kita pero mahina eh. Wait lang ah. Sige nga. Isa pa, Miss Dayag. Hello po. Miss Dayag, hello. Pero okay na po. Wala kaming naririnig. Olivia. Sir, yung sa plate. Okay, what about? What about the plate? Sir? Sir, you pwede were going to upload naman po the recording. Yung part ng base plate. Ano ibig mo sabihin sa pwede yung ulitin yung part ng base plate? Ulitin kong i-discuss or uulitin na... Uh... What do you mean, Miss Dayag? Ulitin sagutan. Oo, oh, okay. Bakit nasagutan mo na ba yung sa base plate? Miss Dayag? Yes po. Ah, oh, okay. 
So, kung nagkamali ka doon, okay lang kasi hindi ko pa naman i-check doon sa last na pinasubmit ko. So, yung ipapasubmit ko na next, nandun yung base plate. So, kung nasagutan mo na before, pwede mo ulit siyang sagutan ngayon. So, kung mali ka before sa laboratory work number 3 natin, okay lang, hindi ko pa naman i-check ka ano yun. Pero, plus A for the effort. So, okay. Um, nasagot ko ba yung tanong mo, Miss Olivia? Okay, so, teka. Ay, teka. Yung, mic, yung headphones ko pala ata yung may problema. Teka lang ha. I-reconnect ko lang sandali. Wait lang guys. For a while. At nahila ko pala kasi yung headphones ko. Pero nag-reset siya kanina. Wait lang guys ha. For a while. Okay, sorry Miss Dayag. Ako pala yung may problema kanina, no? Natanggal pala yung headphones ko. So, hindi pala yung microphone mo yung may problema ko pala. Anyway, so, ayun, nasagot ko naman yung tanong mo, no, Miss Dayag? Olivia? No, okay. Yes, sir. Okay lang. Then, um, Miss Thomas, parang ano, parang may tatanong ka ata kanina? Kasi nakita ko nag-on yung oh, mic mo. No, sir. Confirm ko lang po if you were going to upload this recording, sir. Yep. I will. So, siguro, okay. af after processing, siguro ano na, baka bukas na ng hapon pero, kasi medyo matagal mag-process itong video. And lalo na 1 hour 17 minutes na itong ating recording. Medyo matagal siya. Pero up upload ko as soon as matapos yung processing. Okay po, sir. Thank you po. Okay, sure. So, are there any more questions, guys? Okay, so if wala na, ano pala guys, if upload ko na lang yung inyong plate number, tawag dito, plate, basta yung next plate nyo, soon. Pero sa mga iba sa inyo dito na hindi pa tapos yung inyong plate number 3 or yung compression design natin, tapusin nyo na para masimulan nyo na yung sa base plate. So, yung susu sa susunod naman, um, magawa lang kayo ng base plate, then isasummarize nyo lang yung pinagagawa nyo for the previous courseworks. So, yun lang naman. So, okay. Isa pa. Meron bang katanungan? So, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so if there are no more questions, guys, I will now be ending the recording. So, end ko recording natin.